<laughs> Hello. Uh, obviously, I am in the kitchen on this lovely bonfire day morning. So um, I thought since I'm making this stuff anyways for a get-together with my family tonight that I might as well just stick it on video and then, you know, if you're inspired to do so or any variation on it, then uh, at least I put it on the video. I got the stuff out anyway, so let's do it. So Guy Fox. So this is a curry, um, curry cabbage carrot slaw. And I make it all the time, especially because I have, like, great veggies from Roots Country Farm in Bay Roberts. And I love them. And I get their CSA basket. Hi, Sienna! How are you this Saturday? Anyhow, I have these, uh, like, fantastic vegetables, like, all naturally grown. Like, super jazzed about them. So I always like to make something really great. And so we're getting together tonight, so I'm going to make a poop ton of slaw and I'm gonna make it like tasty and really good so you're kind of getting like still that good like good chew feeling but it's also healthy and it's raw even though you know you don't want to be talking about raw around the bonfire you know like you just want it to taste good all right so let's get started I'm good I'm cooking for bonfire night are you doing anything for bonfire tonight are you are you Besh said, okay, if you're doing a video, make sure you shut the door on the kitchen. And I'm like, oh, right. And then I realized I didn't shut the door on the kitchen. Anyhow, let's make our coleslaw. It's really fun, and it's really good for you, and it tastes really good, and it's coleslaw, right? Like, think, you know, remember Kentucky Fried Chicken coleslaw back in the day? <gasps> and maybe it's still like it. I guess I just don't go to Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore to find out. Anyhow, we're going to make, like, really good stuff. Ooh, thanks for all the hearts. Oh, they're so pretty. It's like fairy hearts across my kitchen. Okay, so what we do, so I use my handy dandy food processor. Stick the top. Oh, I should show you. I forgot. Now it's kind of dirty because I just shredded cheese with it, but now I'm going to shred cabbage as well. So it's this attachment with that blade that shreds stuff finely. And stick that on the top the top of my food processor on and I need my little plungy thing that like shoves everything down in it and then I have it on about halfway and all right it's kind of loud for a little bit but wait till you see how fast this happens it's cool here we go loud sorry Try not to force it, but you have to a little bit. Anyhow, that was probably outrageously loud. I apologize. But just wait till you see. It's worth it. All right. Look, the blade kind of gets bunged up a little bit. Anyhow, I just shove it all into this big bowl over here, which you maybe can't see, but I'm just going to empty that out just so I can free up my blade. The, the cleaner you keep the blade on your, on your spinner thing, the, the better, because um, then everything shreds like perfectly. Now check this out. Look, in seconds, shredded carrots like yellow. As we talked about earlier, I just did a video on my um, moose meat layer dip and I also use this to shred cheese and that type of stuff. All right so now that we have the carrots done I also have a lot of cabbage. So let me see where am I? Okay can you see that? Maybe I move up a bit. All right so since getting my CSA basket regularly for a few years now from Roots Country Farm, um, 
I have figured out how to wisely use the vegetables. Anyhow, this is just so you know, I just keep a bowl on my counter when I'm using a lot of vegetables and it's my compost bowl. So then I just throw everything in there and then this goes right into my compost bowl. So there's a method to my madness. Anyhow, so I figured out how to process vegetables like never before, I must say. I, I was not used to the volume of vegetables that come through my door when Roots is producing. It's gorgeous, like turnips and, oh my God, and beets. And I don't think I actually want to be cut this way. Which way do I want to go? Hold on. Yeah, no, that's the same. Okay. There we go. This is why sharp knives are good. Oh my god. <laughs> Luckily, because I'm on video, I will make this happen. Oh, it's amazing what your ego can do when it's on the line. <laughs> Woo! Nothing like wrestling a freaking cabbage. Now, my demo wasn't as I had planned. <laughs> a lot of grunting, hey? It's like my, my cabbage workout. Whew. All right, so I just get rid of the, the old stuff. I've now had this cabbage for, um, God, how long in my fridge? Maybe a few weeks now, a month at least. So uh, they hold up really well, especially root vegetables. I just keep them in the fridge. So the key is to cut out, you know, that big core in the bottom. So I cut them in quarters and then just, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then I just chop out that middle bit because it's super bitter and it's really, I don't know. I could maybe use it because it's going in a coleslaw and it's going to be shredded up. But in general, you know, screw it, take it out. It's bitter. I won't take out as much as that one. And then I compost all that stuff that I throw away. So, tonight is Guy Fox night, bonfire night. How fun is that? So now I have to cut the cabbage in uh, segments so that I can fit them in through the, the tube in the top here. So it's gonna have to fit in through there, so I have to make everything into like bite size, like tube size pieces. Sometimes my calculations are good, sometimes they're not. And the tighter you can keep your vegetables, like if your leaves of cabbage all like fall apart, it's harder to get them down in the tube. If you can keep it in one solid piece, it's way better. All right, let me see, is that gonna fit? Yeah, that'll fit, we're in. Okay, let me see. And obviously it's better to cut it a bit smaller than the tube. It's better to have it a bit smaller than too big and then you gotta figure out what the hell to do. I mean, it's obviously not the end of the world, but just a factor removed. I'm not into cooking longer than I had to or cleaning up. So <laughs> as quick and as you know efficient as I can get there, it's good. And when you feed it, stuff in through here, as you're feeding it in, keep feeding in more and it'll like get more of your vegetable shredded. All right, here we go. Oh, and one cabbage makes like so much cabbage, it like blows up. So it makes so much food, it's just the best. Oh, and really healthy stuff in it too. Like cabbage is amazing. And Roots Country Farm makes uh, like red cabbages as well as, you know, our standard jigs dinner green ones but I hate boiled cabbage but I love it raw and shredded with a good sauce okay let's shred uh, uh, uh. okay see how we make out <laughs> shredding cabbage as we speak alright let me see so before you get to the bottom shove more in Because cabbage is kind of leathery, it takes a little encouragement. Right. 
and do your cabbage in segments. It's easier to do a smaller amount. I try, I've tried like many times and I still do. I try like lazy man's load of trying to shred vegetables <laughs> into one into one container and it's just like misery and unnecessary. So like just stop and reload and clean out your blade and you know, work smarter, not harder. Why hello? Did you get the universal signal about the closed door? Yes. It worked. Alright, let me clean out the blade. Oh, I actually could have shredded more. Look, I still have a lot of room. Can you see that? Look, shredded cabbage. Dump it in the big bowl. Like just three carrots and a whole head of cabbage makes, like, I, at the risk of using this word a lot, like it makes a shit ton of food. So if I was ever on a deserted island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and we could call it Newfoundland, uh, I would want cabbage from Roots Country Farm. <laughs> Naturally grown! I know, how many times do I have to say that, right? But a lot of times, being a farmer, God, that can't be easy. I would never want to be a farmer, but I want awesome vegetables, I tell you. Like I said, I shredded cheese in here just before the cabbage, so the cheese and the cabbage are getting all like mixed up together. Num num. I mean, what could be better than, well, what could make cabbage any better but cheese? Yum. Okay, ready? And we'll turn it on. And then we'll do it with these. Cabbage. Down we go. So you try to ease it down, but without like burning out your motor or anything. You'll know if you're if you're you know if your motor's like straining and all that stuff. So don't force it too much. Be kind. All right. Okay, this may be like a lot of shredding, but. I have to use it all, so. Oh, look, see, that won't fit. How do I get that? Hmm. I this. Let's try that. Hmm, this one. All right. Here we go again. And if you're going to get this dirty and get all this shit out, you might as well make a lot of it because then you're done, right? I don't want to have to, like, take this out and shred the other half of the cabbage later. I don't have that much time on my hands. Or if I do, I want to, don't want to spend it doing that. Okay, here we go. More cabbage. I like wrestling an alligator to start. It's kind of weird. And the key is to get your food in there without, <laughs> without it getting bummed up. So you kind of got to get a feel for it. And it takes a while to find that, you know, the best way that you're processor works. Me and Maya have been together for such a long time now that I think we've got it worked out. I mean, I still get lazy and like jam too much shit in it, but, you know. But at least I know it going into it. For the outrageous noise. There we go. We put it in our big bowl in the back here where everything is going. Get rid of the big pieces on the top. And you know what? I would normally chop up all those big pieces and also put them in, but for the sake of the video and just for getting on with stuff, I'm just composting the large pieces. But I'm very, like, food thrifty, normally. 
No, food efficient. I like that word better. I'm food efficient. Yes. And you know, I get it from my mother and my grandmother too. Like, just, you don't waste anything. It's there, and especially like really great veggies that are naturally grown in Bay Roberts. And you can get your own CSA basket. And what is it? Community, community share agriculture. So in other words, you buy your, you pre-buy your veggies from the girls at the farm. And then uh, that helps them, you know, buy seeds and, and have some capital to get the product going, you know, in the ground and everything. And then, so we buy our baskets in advance for the whole season. And then once they have vegetables, then we get vegetables. So it helps them get, you know, their their thing going in advance and you know it's when it comes down to business it is capital and you need capital so helping and you might think oh my god it's so many veggies but give them away give them away buy a basket give away half of it like split with your sisters I don't know split it with your neighbor something oops I forgot too much talking you caught me monologuing <laughs> Oh yeah, shredded, more cabbage. Look, just like the kernel. <laughs> I mean, really was like, in my opinion, Kentucky Fried Coleslaw was the best coleslaw on the go when I was a kid. Like, there was nothing like that. I'm sure with the sugar in it, <laughs> it had to be, but I don't know. It was the only way I was ever gonna eat raw cabbage as a child, like I wouldn't eat onions. I wouldn't eat anything. Like I actually, I feel very bad for my mother, but she doesn't even complain. Like God love her. Anyhow, I'm different now. I am a woman of the world. And really, I don't know. As far as I can get it is good, really. So here we go, one more load of outrageous amount of cabbage like I said from one head of cabbage it's like a lot of cabbage shredded yes, I was actually thinking as I was shredding that if I had known that coleslaw was raw cabbage back in the day, I, I don't think I would have eaten it because, you know, I was that type of kid for some reason about food, you know, like, God, the time we waste. Anyhow, yeah, if I'd known that was cabbage, I maybe would have went, no, I don't like it. Meanwhile, loved it. Loved it, loved it. All right, so clean all that out. Now we have, like I said, our big pieces on the top. Let's clean up our lid here or our spinner top thingy. Oh my God, I love my food processor. So at some point in time, I'm sure I'll get my affiliate marketing set up. And then I'll have a really nice food processor that I've tried out and love. And then I could actually recommend it to you guys if, if you wanted to buy one. And I would have already checked it out for you. And then you could just go click. And then somehow in the back end, it flips back to me and I get paid. And I mean, if you were going to buy one anyways, wouldn't that be a good idea? Anyhow, that's affiliate marketing. I'm not doing that, but I will be. So, that's our last bit of cabbage. All right, let's just clean all that out. Oh yeah, if you're one of those people that have always used like a spoon or whatever to, to clean stuff out of your bowls and stuff, man, get a spatula. Best thing ever. And I mean, I know people are like, what, she thinks we've never seen a spatula? I'm like, I know, but I love mine. I have like five of them on the go at any one time. 
They're just great and they just speed things up. So I'm not even going to clean up my container because now we're going to make the juice. Okay, no more cutting. Let's move that. Here we go. Let's move this out. Look at the size of this friggin' bowl of cabbage. Look, look, it's huge. All right, so what I normally do now is I get my big metal spoon. That's good for lifting. My carrot is underneath, as you can see. The carrot shreds nicer than the cabbage because the carrot ends up in bigger pieces. Anyhow. I'll do enough mixing of that after once we make our sauce. So we have an outrageous amount of cabbage, <laughs> which means it's pretty dry. So I like a fairly wet coleslaw and because it's going to sit for a few hours anyways, and it'll soak up all the juice that will make like a good amount of sauce for it. Um, hi. Blade. Can't find my blade. Hold on, I got a blade here. Because we're going to switch out our blade for our flat top one that we were just using. I think I have it out. I just yeah. can't see it. Is it attached to it? Is it attached to it? No, it's not it. Oh, strange things have happened. a blade, but I, I know I have it out. Right. Or I feel I have it out. Where else would it be? Kind of slows things down, huh? Uh, am I looking at it? And it's not that. No, oh. it's that round, the big round one, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, here it is. Oh, well, that guy. Yeah. This blade. That took a little while, didn't it? Alright, so now this one goes down in the Food processor, and what I add now is I like a sweet mayonnaise and I add curry as well because chance of children eating it slim to none, right? Anyhow, so I make it curry because I can and I love curry. So what I use is, and I think based on the amount of, I don't know, the amount of stuff I have, anyhow, this is a tidbit can of pineapple, which is my base, so it kind of gives me that sweet, and I chunk it up so that it's not like, oh, pieces of pineapple, which I don't like, but it gives it a good backbone, and it's, you know, vitamin C, whatever, kind of healthy. Throw the whole can in. Can in. I think I should just put two cans in. It's a lot. And I think I'd rather have more pineapple than mayonnaise, which is my other ingredient. Okay, let's do it. So, two cans of pineapple chunk, or it could be anything really. It can already be crushed if you don't even want to put it in the processor. Juice and all. And I make sure I get uh, pineapple in water, not not sweetened. Pineapple in pineapple juice. And then I put in some, um, I'll use dried garlic because it's going to sit there for a while. So rather than cut up fresh, which would be good as well. So I don't know about it teaspoon and you kind of don't want to knock people on their arse either with too much garlic and make it like you know a bonfire faux pas you know that uncle that just stinks it's your fault you're getting too much garlic sharp uh i use cayenne pepper loves to heat uh i probably use now if it was just for us i would i'd really crank her up but say like an eighth of a teaspoon just to give it some you know a little bit of backbone but not like hot coleslaw <laughs> now i've made some hot coleslaw in my time and then uh, madras curry powder i keep it in big jars because i use a lot of it 
not sure where my curry flavor came from, but I think it was in Vancouver it started. And then uh, I realized I must have I must have some connection to it, so I put a lot of this in because there's a lot of cabbage, and cabbage absorbs a lot of flavor, so um, I put a lot in. Might as well like get some good pack for your punch or whatever you say. And because there's also a lot of cabbage and carrot, which is very kind of flat, I use salt as well, which is always good for just kicking it up a little bit. Um, maybe a you can decide, like, if you want to put in a tablespoon of salt, go for it. I don't know. I guess I just put in, like, a teaspoon, and then afterwards I'll taste it and see if it needs any more. Also keeping in mind that... Um, I can put in more curry, I think. Keeping in mind that, yeah, all these flavors are going to, like, meld and gel together, so, you know, it's hard to taste something fresh out of the out of the pot, you know, because it'll taste different in a while. And some olive oil, a little bit. Say, I don't know, that was a tablespoon. And then, mayonnaise. Gotta clean off my spatula. All right. Once again, spatula, like great. I use light Hellman's. There is also, uh, I really like the one Spectrum that's in the natural section at Dominion. That's very good. Anyhow, I use this one. So here we go. I don't know how much this is. Maybe, let's say that's a cup of mayonnaise. So I'm just going to add more because there's a lot of coleslaw and I want it to be flavorful and creamy. And sometimes when I make it, I'm like, oh my god, that's so much sauce. But then once it sits there for a few hours and everything just starts to soak it up, it's actually really, it's good to have a lot of liquid. Yes, mayonnaise. You're like, oh my god. Well, listen, there's a lot of veggies, a lot of veggies. So we might as well make it all in one run, make it good and goopy and delicious. It is a bonfire after all, right? Hanging out with my family? Like... It's when you eat the good shit. All right, so all I'm going to do now is this is just going to mix it, basically. Um, the blade will chop up the pineapple way more because I don't want chunks of pineapple. Now, if you love pineapple, you could just pour them in in tidbit sizes, but if I get a piece of pineapple in my mouth that much... I like it discreet. Okay, so I've turned it down so it's a slower crunch, which will mean, uh, sorry, slower spin, which will mean it won't chunk up my pineapple too much, like blend it right to a liquid. So the lower you do it, the slower the blade goes, and you can kind of like just chop it up a bit. So here we are chopping up our pineapple curry mix. Look at that, look how quick. All right. Like I said, it seems like a lot of juice. It does seem like a lot of juice. All right. Put that over there. Here's our shredded cabbage. This is our, oh, let me see, how big are our pieces here? If they're too big, I don't want to, we have to do them. Uh, no, I think that's not enough. <laughs> there are a few big pieces in there. I, I do not want to. So let's do it a little bit more. Where's my lid? Here, turn it up a bit. Get more chop. And yeah. I think that's it. Margie Smith Thorne. Hi, Kellyanne. Love your cooking tutorials. <laughs> Ah, it's funny, I don't even really feel like they're tutorials, but uh, I'm just happy you, you kind of sign on and hang out and watch my foolishness. So thank you. Thank you for commenting too. All right. 
So we've kind of got this mayonnaise-y pineapple chunk base sauce. Here we go. And I never know which tactic is best. So you can kind of see the lumps and bumps in it, which <laughs> may be gross, but in the end, it's really good. So I mix it around like this. Um, so, I mean, I never know with a sauce if it's going to need something extra or, you know, like it comes down to taste in the end. Like if you taste it and you like, you can't taste any garlic, well, you kind of got to weigh out if the garlic is going to come out, you know, with time after it sits in the fridge or it, do you need to add more? And, and, and the same thing with salt, like cabbage is, is a real flavor sucker. So I find you have to add a fair amount of like say a curry flavor in order for it to taste like curry because it's it just absorbs a lot of flavor. <sighs> so let's see. Now look at that. And I was thinking like two cans of pineapple might be a lot, like maybe too liquidy. Look, so there's hardly any liquid in here now. Like once again, do I have enough for it? No. Oh my God, it looks so good. What I love about any of the curries is the color is gorgeous. It just kicks everything up. Me being a painter and all. I'm even looking at this going, hmm. It's a bit of cadmium yellow deep with a, yeah, right? Titanium white. Margie, it looks really good. I think it is really good. So, since we're at this spot, I'm just gonna have a taste, see what we have on the go, just just like fresh out of the gate. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Keeping in mind that, you know, things are going to happen as it sits. Now, meanwhile, I'm going to add a little bit more garlic because it tastes very cabbage -y. Just keep in mind that dried garlic is, like, super concentrated. <laughs> so when it soaks up moisture and it lets it go, it's a lot of garlic. So I think I've kind of overdosed if anything, my sisters, because they make them food sometimes, I think I've overdosed them on garlic a few times. Maybe a little bit more cayenne. I didn't taste any heat in it. So, and I was gonna add uh, quinoa, but there's not enough sauce and quinoa is just like a sponge in a dish. So maybe screw the quinoa. Screw the quinoa. No, I love quinoa. Don't screw the quinoa. Eat the quinoa. All right, so how are we doing now? Hmm. I also think we could put more uh, curry in it. Curry powder. Like I said, after that sits for a while, that could be fairly... Oh, uh, the other thing I like to put in is... Lime juice. This is the best lime juice of all time. It's Lakewood. Mm -hmm. uh, it's cold pressed, so it hasn't been uh, boiled or, you know, pasteurized. It's just pressed limes. And this gives a dish like this a really nice kick. So if you get a bottle of, like, uh, of this, just stick it in your fridge. Uh, sriracha. Organic. It's at Costco. It comes with a, a green chili one, too. Anyhow, madly in love. Just to give it a little tang in the background without making it hot because you know you want to keep it social, right? <laughs> right? All right, so that's about it. So just keep tasting, add some salt, add some stuff, like just feel it out for yourself. Uh, Honey is always nice, gives it a, a, every salad a nice backbone. And then what I do is I also add trail mix to it. 
So, um, but because there's some nut allergy people and stuff like that, that I'm just going to put the trail mix on the side in a bowl and you can put it into your coleslaw if you want to. But if everybody in your household loves trail mix and you know the raisins in it kind of plump up a little bit, but there's not too many of them because too many raisins just kills a party. But a few make it sweet and juicy, so you can sprinkle them in now if you wanted, and if everybody eats it, it's delicious once it's all soaked up. So trail mix, do that too. Anyhow, so this is your healthy bonfire curry coleslaw. And you could also add like chickpeas and all kinds of other good shit to make it still tasty. All right, and you can eat it with tortilla chips. Just saying. Okay, happy bonfire day. Bye, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, yes, and join my pizza pie email list if you want to keep up to date on recipes and stuff like that. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, have a good day. Bye. Psh.